So these days, if you want the best overall value, Ryzen is the obvious choice. However, I went with the Intel i5-9400F in this $700 gaming PC as it offers excellent value for a mid-range gamer even compared to Ryzen. This PC can easily game and edit at 1080p and 1440p. This is a hardware hub and let's get right into it. So before we start, I would like to quickly mention I have links to everything in the description so check those out if you're interested. But with that out of the way, let's get into the build itself. To start it off with the CPU, as you saw in the beginning, we have the Intel Core i5-9400F for $130. This $130 retail price that I'm seeing from Best Buy, I uh, wasn't really sure if it's a sale price or not, but even at the regular $145 price point, this is still a very good CPU. This is a 6-core CPU with no hyperthreading and comes clocked at 2.9GHz with a boost clock of 4.1GHz. While the base clock is kind of low, it's not necessarily bad because it means your PC will run cooler and use less power when it's not needed. When it comes to gaming, this CPU can probably outperform the Ryzen 5 1600 and 2600 which are AMD's competitors in this price range. If you're doing productivity tasks or anything that uses multiple threads, then Intel will fall behind compared to the AMD competitors, but I feel like there is definitely a market for a mid-range gaming oriented CPU like this i5. So with the CPU, you're getting the best value that Intel currently offers and the best gaming performance in the sub $150 price range. Now for the motherboard, we have the Azrock B365M Phantom Gaming 4 for $84. This has 4 RAM slots, 6 SATA ports, and 3 M.2 slots, so you have a lot of potential for upgrades. It's also capable of crossfire and has RAID support, which are pretty cool features to have. Now since this is a B365 motherboard, it does not support overclocking, which is kind of a disappointment compared to Ryzen, but it's nothing new for Intel. The CPU in this PC is not unlocked, so it does not matter much anyways. Altogether, this motherboard offers a decent feature set for the price. Now for the RAM, I went with the Oloy 16GB set for $50. This is a 2x8GB set that comes clocked at 2666MHz. Intel is not as sensitive to RAM speeds like Ryzen is, but Coffeelix CPUs do see a reasonable performance jump when RAM speed increases, so spending a little bit extra for a 2666MHz set is worth it. The 16GB capacity is a perfect amount for gaming these days, as that's roughly the amount that most games recommend, and it will allow for some moderate 1080p and even 1440p video editing. So altogether, this kit gets the job done at a reasonable price point. Now for the storage, we have both an SSD and a hard drive. For the hard drive, we have the Western Digital Caber Blue 1TB for $45. This is a 7200 RPM hard drive that has 64 megawatts of cache. These specs basically translate into average hard drive performance. It's just going to serve your mass storage needs like storing all your games and large media files. Besides that, there's not much more to say about this hard drive. It's just a very good value and gets the job done at a low price per gigabyte. Now, in addition to this hard drive, we have the ADATA SU800 512GB SSD for $58. Now, SSDs are a lot faster and much more reliable compared to hard drives. Because of that, I'd recommend you install your OS and all of your applications onto your SSD so you get those snappy load times. Now, even after you download all of your applications, the 512GB capacity is probably going to be enough to download a couple games as well. So if you have a couple games that you play a lot, or if you play a game that has a really long loading time, I would recommend you download it onto your SSD so you save time when booting up that game. So altogether, this SSD is a great addition to this PC, and it will speed up the overall loading performance. Now for the graphics card, perhaps the most important part of a gaming PC because it influences your performance the most, we have the EVGA GTX 1660 for $225. This is the only reasonable offering right now in the low $200 price range. It's a very nice looking GPU with a great dual fan design which gives decent overclocking headroom. EVGA is probably the best Nvidia graphics card manufacturer so I would not think twice when buying this. It also comes with a $15 mail-in rebate right now on UEG, which if you use can knock the price down to $210, which makes this a no-brainer. The 6GB VRAM that this has is a very good amount for 1080p gaming and can allow for some low-end 1440p gaming. So altogether, it's a very good card for 1080p gamers and can even allow you to game at 1440p. Now for the case, we went with the Fantex P300 for $60. This is a very premium case with a tempered glass side panel and a PSU shroud. 
Building this is easy as you have quite a bit of room and a PSD shroud to hide your cables in addition to well placed routing holes. Airflow is going to be decent as well as it's relatively spacious and has a few fan mounts. This case has pretty much every useful feature that a case could have in an attractive package. Last but not least for the power supply, we have the 500W Sonic for $45. This is an 80 plus bronze rated unit that has two A pins. Having two A pins is nice as it doesn't limit you when it comes to upgrading your GPU. While this power supply is non-modular, it does have pretty nice looking cables and this case in this PC has a PSU shroud so that should not really be a deal breaker. Seasonic definitely makes nice PSUs with quality components so you'll definitely be fine with this. Now after seeing all the parts you're probably wondering, how will this PC perform? In certain games like Metro Exodus, you will have to drop down to 1080p to get a playable experience. Meanwhile, in other games like Far Cry 5 and Battlefield 5, you can crank the settings up to 1440p Ultra and hit the 60fps mark. Now I personally would recommend that you play at 1080p with this PC, simply because at 1080p this PC can pretty much max out every game out there without any issue. At 1440p, you will have to turn on the settings in most games to get a playable frame rate, but after some tweaking, you can definitely get close to 60fps in most games. So altogether, it's a great PC for 1080p gamers, and is also great for those who are looking to get into 1440p gaming. If you have any questions about this PC or PC building in general, please leave a comment down below and I'll help you down there. Also, I want to quickly mention once again, I have links to everything in the description, so check those out if you're interested. But yeah guys, that's all for today. If you liked the video, please be sure to hit the like button. If you didn't like it, please dislike the video and subscribe for more content. And I'll see you guys in the next one.